Hey guys, the immortal words of Justin Wilson. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to uh, clean everything up, get everything staged, clean the journals because I think they do have some kind of assembly lube on your on the main saddles and mains. Just so you know, when you do plastic gauge, it has to be bone dry. You cannot have lubricant oil or anything anywhere on the journal of the crank or the bearings top or bottom when you use plastic gauge because it'll alter your uh, reading. So anyway, let me get everything set up so we can try to get something but done. I have cleaned out everything that I need to to be able to test the bearing clearances on this engine. This is a brand new, not remanufactured, not turned GM350 crankshaft which I will say looks really sweet. If the cam bearings are installed properly and you're, you should be able to see daylight connecting that saddle of the main bearing in the block to the cam bearing in the cam tunnel. So I've got everything wiped down, got the crankshaft sitting in there. I wiped off the, uh, I think we're using a straight STP as engine assembly lube. Uh, I got it all wiped off of everything. Uh, just a side note for anybody, if you're paying big money, all that is is straight STP oil treatment with some coloring additive. So if you're just, you, if you're paying more than $5 or whatever a bottle of S, straight STP costs, you're throwing good money away that you could be spending to go faster. Quick little visual update, set your plastic gauge on your journal as close to the top centered as you can what sucks is you cannot even breathe towards the crankshaft or it'll blow these little pieces of plastic gauge off so you have to turn your fan off which sucks when it's hot like it is today it's hard to manipulate the plastic gauge when it's this hot because it sticks to your fingers and doesn't want to come off Going to run through the torque of the main caps, center out in the increments of 25 pounds. So basically, I started out by putting the caps on as straight and soft as I can, run them all down to 25 pounds. Then we're going to go through and torque them center out to 50 pounds. Twenty five fifty Nice even stroke. Don't be jerking on it or double clicking. Now that junk. Nice even pull. Give the torque wrench a chance to do its job, and you're gonna be a lot happier. You see a lot of people who uh, like to double click their torque wrenches, but it's not the most accurate way to torque. Release the tension on those bolts. You don't wanna just start on one end to start cranking down through it with an impact or something goofy like that. Just get you a long half inch breaker bar and kind of reverse, you know, reverse engineer what you just put together Slowly release that tension off that crank and block and then carefully remove your main caps That's when we'll get to see the goody-goody and find out what kind of a uh, main bearing clearance we have on this engine and Slowly loosened all my main caps What that does is it helps relieve stress on your main caps themselves it also relieves any potential stress that you have on your crankshaft. Hopefully your crankshaft is not touching the main bearings. Crankshafts don't run on the bearings. Crankshafts run on a film of oil that's in between the journal of your crankshaft and the bearing face or surface. So 
a lot of people are surprised when they hear that. When a spinning crankshaft comes in contact with an actual bearing, that's when it gets damaged. That's when it eats the bearing and tries to spin it. It basically spins like it's floating on a film of oil that's in between the journal of the crank and the bearing. So, all right, let me go get my rubber mallet so we can get these caps a little bit. Okay. So basically, we've loosened our main bolts. I mean loose, where they're not touching anything. And all you gotta do is take a little mallet, just tap it. You'll see it when it starts bouncing loose. then you'll know you can start to pull the caps off very carefully so not to disturb any of our squished plastic gauge and we will find out if sometimes it's stuck to the crank journal sometimes it's stuck to the bearing so got a little bit of a little bit of action on both same on this one. That's good though. That shows we didn't have any contamination on the bear or a journal or the bearing face. And a thing. I mean, basically when you're pulling these off and you're getting your first look at the plastic gauge sitting across the surface, you're gonna look at two things. Number one, how wide it smashed because the width of your plastic gauge you want to look at your plastic gauge in terms of how wide did it get smashed how consistently is it smashed from one side of the journal to the next see there's the rear main Here's the next one. And the next one. And you'll notice I have this crankshaft positioned in such a fashion that I can get to all those main journals without fighting with the counterweights. This is a very consistent crankshaft. It doesn't have taper on any of the main bearings because basically what a taper is is if you squashed out your plastic gauge and then one side was wider than the other that's something to, to be a uh, I don't want to say to be afraid of but you definitely need to be aware of it because that means that your your bear your not your bearing but your journal on your crank is it true it means it's not flat it's not square and can cause issues depending on how bad it is. Okay, just to give you a little explanation of how plastic gauge works, and in a machinist community, they don't believe in plastic gauge, so take it with a grain of salt. When you try to tell people, yeah, I checked my bearing clearances, and they say, oh, well, how did you do it? You say, oh, I plastic gauge my bearings. And they say, oh, you shot in the dark and hoped you hit the wall. Uh, don't be surprised if you hear statements like that because basically machinists don't trust plastic gauge because it truly, it's a, it's a representation of the clearance that's available. It's not nearly as accurate as actually uh, miking it with precision tools but it's far better than not checking it at all. So, pulled everything loose, carefully removed the caps, and the way this, <clears throat> see if I can get this in here without blinding you guys. Am I on metric again? Nope. All right, so the way this works is you put a thin strip of plastic gauge, which is basically like a metered small diameter plastic or wax. And what it does is you set it on there, you assemble your main cap, your bearings, you know, put your crank in, your bearings crank, cap, torque it to your final spec, 
and it will tell you how much it squashes that little piece of, I'm gonna call it wax, because that's kind of the consistency it has, but then you have to have this little uh, gauge. So after you squash it and remove your cap, you take this little piece of paper and hold it up against your line. So, I mean, without getting too overly critical, so I had it as one and three quarter thousandths on the front main cap, two thousandths on all the other, the, the rest of the four. But here's the area, and I'm gonna call the machinist and ask his recommendation because he's the one who's been kind of mentoring them on this build. Normally you wanna see one thousandths clearance per inch of journal diameter since a small block Chevy has a 2.45 inch main diameter, you would want to see 0.00245 or slightly larger main bearing clearances specifically on a race engine. Now, if the machinist tells them that, you know, using the variance of a plastic gauge to check their clearance, if two thousandths is, is good for him, uh, I would probably almost bet he's going to tell them not to run a, a very thick engine oil because when you have tight clearance, specifically tighter than what is normally recommended, uh, thick oil is the enemy. You do not want to do that. So anyway, I just finished plastic gauging this crank. And like I said, it's got one and three quarters on the front main and a pretty solid two, very consistent across the journals, two thousandths, on the main journals, two, three, four, and five. So that kind of gives you a rundown of how to do this uh, plastic gauging bearings. The procedure is going to be the same on rod bearings, and hopefully we'll be able to get to that part soon. As always, thanks for watching these videos. Hopefully this helps somebody out, uh, helps somebody build a good, strong engine, proper clearances or if they have something that's out of whack, it gives them a chance to find it and fix it before it costs them more money. <coughs> like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.